Sunrise, June 5th, 1875, 5 a.m. Comanche Creek, Colorado. A man named Peters came out of the Comanche Creek Cafe. He carried two breakfasts, one for a prisoner, another for the deputy on duty in the jail. for the prisoner. Mr. Peters, he doesn't feel so good. Go. Wait a minute. What is it? I said, it? let's go. Now. The prisoner, known as Jack Mason, had been freed by men who were complete strangers to him. Second horse. Come on, Mason, get aboard. The deputy had seen the young outlaw's face. It cost him his life. Mason was blamed for the murder. The price on his head was double. Nine thirty-five a.m. Two weeks later. A quiet morning in Harmony, Colorado. Mason presented a San Francisco bank draft to be cashed. Turn around. Where's the payroll? The payroll? In the strong box. Unlock that door. Yes, sir. Where is it? Down there. Down and open that box. Come on, open the box. Don't shoot, please. Over there on the floor. Do it, the man says.
Now, you stay down there till we're out of town. Here. Jack Mason was the only man identified by the clerk. The Adams Express Company raised the reward. Mason was now worth $3,500 dead or alive. It was time to collect the reward. Jack Mason was killed in cold blood. In 1875, Wichita was a bustling frontier town. The National Detective Agency, a private enterprise, was created to fight the lawlessness of the West. Its headquarters were here. Head of the agency was Michael Bryant. Mason, the slain man whose right name was Jack Springer, and Peters were two of his undercover agents. We'll get them. We have to. But I can't risk another man this way, Peters. We'll try something else. If I hadn't been bushwhacked, our plan would have worked. Jack would still be alive. It wasn't your fault, Bill. They'd have killed you, too, if you'd have got a look at him. I know. They're ruthless and smart. We just have to be smarter. If necessary, I'll put every man we've got on this case. A lot of men won't do any good, Chief. Not many people out there. Too many strangers show up, the gang will just lay low until they move on. Well, we've got to get one man inside that gang, and this time keep contact with them. I don't know, Bill. They killed Jack Springer in cold blood. He never had a chance. Peters is right, Chief. All right. We'll try it one more time. But it's got to be the right man. Somebody who's smart, tough, never loses his head. Peters, you and Nielsen find Gifford and bring him here. Right, Chief. Fine Gifford, the chief says. That's fine. It's a big town. Where are you gonna look? Well, if I know Giff, you look where the girls are. Wait a minute. That's it. He said something about a date with a redhead. Well, we detectives, aren't we? We ought to be able to find a redhead. Bob, honey, why can't you come see the show tonight? I told you, I just can't. I've got to get caught up on my work. See, I put though. Right here. Right here. Right here. Why can't you do anything I want to do? I will, baby. What do you want to do? Well... Uh-huh. Buck, you leave me alone. Shut your lying face. I'm gonna give you a good whooping, you lying, cheating redhead. Hold on, mister. There's no call to use vile language. You get out of here, you sweet-smelling fancy Dan. I'm gonna give her a licking she ain't never gonna forget. So you just put your tail between your legs and get out of here. Just a moment, please. By any chance, is this man your husband? No, he's not. And I fail to see why you have any business here. So why don't you just leave? Quietly, just like you came in. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you a chance to get out of here, Fancy Dan. Now I'm gonna kill you, you get no!
I'm more like that. I thought it was a door and I just walked through it. Anybody here want to make anything out of it? Come on, break it up. Move out of your horse or something. Oh, hello, Giff. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right, fellas. Uh, I'd like to have you meet Tina. Miss Tina... Neville. Neville, of course. That's Mr. Peters and Mr. Nielsen. Well, you weren't too hard to find. Who told you to find me? Eh, that's what I get for being mixed up with a bunch of detectives. The boss wants to see you, pronto. Uh-uh. You tell him I've still got two days' leave left. Bob, they killed Jack Springer. This an order, Bob. The decision is yours. No decision to be made, Chief. Jack Springer was a friend of mine. I know. It's settled then. Now, let's go over what we know or can guess so far. We're faced with a shrewd, ruthless gang of outlaws. Their operation is clever and deadly. They wait until a man with a price in his head is jailed, then spring him and use him as a front man for a series of holdups, making sure he's the only one ever recognized. The reward keeps going up. When it reaches three or four thousand dollars, the man's killed. Somebody's hired to collect the reward. And we can't touch him because it's all legal. The money's his, dead or alive. Peters will brief you on what he's learned. Well, the, uh, the gang has cut itself out of territory right here. Comanche Creek, Sweetwater, Harmony, and Adobe Wells. This is wild country, sparsely settled. Any law out there? Not much. The entire area is policed by only one marshal, a man by the name of uh, Shearer. It seems to know his job, but it's too much for one man. That's about all I've learned. I lost track of Springer the day they uh, broke him loose. We'll plant our agents in the area before Gifford leaves. Peters will be in charge. We'll have four men. Uh, go ahead, Peters. Well, we'll get two on at this big cow outfit south of Sweetwater. Another in Harmony, and the fourth can hang out in Adobe Wells. I'll be a cattle buyer working the entire area. Good. Be ready to leave when Peter sends the word. Sir, I haven't forgotten about you, Nielsen. When Gifford goes, you follow him. No matter what happens, I want you to stay right on his tail. Don't ever lose track of him. Yes, sir. Now, either Alvin or I will be in this office around the clock. I want to be kept posted on everything that happens out there. All right, men, that's all for now. You're going to be my watchdog. Well, sure. I uh, would kind of hate to see them get stuck for another reward. Mm-hmm. Well, now that you mention it, so would I. When the plans and preparations were completed, each agent went his way. They traveled by train, stage, and horseback into northwest Colorado to take the posts assigned to them, ready to move in as needed. Finally, Bryant was notified that it was time for Gifford to leave. All plans were made, and channels of communication had been prepared. Wanted Judd Tanner for train robbery. $1,500 reward. Not a very good picture of me, Chief. Good enough to get you to jail. Telegram from Peters. Comanche Creek. Seems to think that'd be the best spot for me. We have to start somewhere. Besides, I think they have the most comfortable jail. I'll let you know. $800 and $20 gold certificates. They're a part of the loot we recovered from that express car robbery outside of Joplin. Circulate a few of those and see what happens. Gifford left his credentials behind. Where he was going, he would no longer be a national agent. He'd be an outlaw or a corpse.
room, mister? Your best. There you are. Come a long way, huh? Mr. Mr. Gifford. You don't say where you're from. I'm from a lot of places. A long way. You gonna be here for a spell? You can take a week out of that. Well, now, a $20 gold certificate. Well. Nine, ten, and ten makes twenty. Upstairs. The room's upstairs. Second one on the left. Do you have someone to take care of my horse? He's tied out front. Yes, sir. Walter! Walter! Twenty dollar gold certificate. Looks like you already have. How about a drink? No, thank you. You're uh, staying here in the hotel? Yes, I am. Name's Gifford, Bob Gifford. You, uh, you work here? Well, you might say so. I'm Abby Stevens. I own the place. Oh. <sighs> don't tell me you don't approve of lady saloon keepers. Well, in this case, I... I do. Anyone as lovely as you, who wouldn't approve? Mister, don't overdo it. I've been buncoed by experts. Oh, I... I mean it. Let's talk about it later. What time do you close up? Good night, Mr. Guilford. It's been nice talking to you. Okay, please. Something bothering you, mister? Yeah, I don't like your looks. Well, now that you bring it up, I don't much like yours either. Why don't you just get out of here? Mm-mm. I just got here. Ben! Don't you go starting any trouble. Oh, there's no trouble. He just doesn't like my looks, and I don't like his, so it's a standoff. Not with me, it ain't. Ben, don't let him pick a fight with you. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. I imagine he's pretty handy with that gun he's wearing. All right, I told you to get out of here. <laughs> Want to step outside and try it again? Good night, Ben.
Drinks are on me. That's what I got. You don't need anybody to look after you. Oh, but I do. Change your mind about tonight? No, I didn't. You sure don't give up easy. Doesn't pay. I heard Ben Brady was making trouble in here. Oh, he tried to pick a fight, but it's all right now. He's gone. Mr. Gifford, this is our marshal, Dan Shear. Howdy, Mr. Gifford. Brady tried to pick a fight and no shooting? You mean somebody talked him out of it? He talked him out of it, all right. How drew him so fast it made Ben look silly. Well, now, that takes some doing. You better look out for him, though. He won't like being shown up in front of all these people. If he gives you any trouble, you just let me know. Drink, Marshal? No, thanks. Hmm. $20 gold certificate. You don't see too many of these around. How about tonight? Just to talk, please. No, you're too good a talker. How you doing, Giff? Pretty good so far. I flashed a few of those stolen 20s and gave the marshal a couple of short answers. I don't think he liked it. You're off to a running start. Who is that good-looking gal? You're taking that watchdog job a little serious, aren't you? That's the lady saloon keeper. Big improvement over the beer-bellied kind we're used to, wouldn't you say? Amen to that. You know, if you could find gold the way you find women, you'd be the richest man in the world. <laughs> Who wants gold? Tell you what happened. You take the gold and I'll... I better fade, Giff. Like Chief said, I'll be around. You watch your step now. You watch yours. Don't go worrying about me so much. You forget to take care of yourself, you hear? Sure, Giff. Tonight, Tony. Thanks, Miss Abby. I'll bolt the back door on my way out. Joe's opening up in the morning. Fine. Good night, Tony. Good night. Wrong, Marshal? Now, what's that for? Let's see the rest of those 20s. You'd better have a good reason for this, Marshal. I do. These $20 gold certificates were stolen. I don't believe it. Well, see for yourself, the numbers match. They're from an express car robbery in Joplin, Missouri. Won that money in a poker game. We could have won them, couldn't he? I'm sorry, Abby. 
The man's no good. Jack Tanner. Train robbery. I won that money in a poker game. Now, you just try to prove I didn't. Let's go, Tanner. Good night, Abby. Eight a.m. the morning of August first. Nielsen kept a watchful eye on the jail while waiting for the telegraph office to open. Nielsen sent a coded telegram to a dummy address in Wichita. He informed Bryant that Gifford was in jail according to plan. Gifford was in exactly the same spot that Jack Springer had been in two months before. Sunrise, 5.05 a.m., August 5th. Gifford's fourth night in jail. Who is it? My name's Sims. I'm a marshal out of Claiborne. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I'm bringing a prisoner back from Utah, and I, uh, I'd like to hold him here for a couple of hours, if I could. You got extradition papers on him? No, I extradited him with a gun. I got a warrant here, though. We gotta get paid for boarding him, you know. Oh, you get paid. A little something for yourself. Well, now, that's different. I guess it's all right. Here. I'll be right out of here. Not so sure I want to go. Well, you're going. Now move. Where are you going? I need a gun. You get one when the time comes. Now move.
this first piece of information. Apparently, the Circle W Ranch was the gang's hideout. Nielsen had a hard choice to make. Report the hideout or stay close to Gifford. He couldn't do both. Nielsen decided to stay where he was until he could contact Gifford. Good. You got him. Yeah, we got him. Asa Wenton, he owns this spread. How about some breakfast? Got it already. Janie? This is Janie. I'm a grandpa. I'll kill any man that touches her. These men all know it. Now you know it, too. Don't worry, Grandpa. She's too young for me. Well, see that you keep it that way. Janie and me, we live up at the ranch house. And nobody's got any business up there. Sit down. Asa, Judd Tanner, you're quite a man. Express car hold up, served time in the Kansas State Pen. I see he's worth uh, fifteen hundred dollars even before we busted him out. What what is worth now? Well, it's bound to be more. I'll get blamed for that deputy you killed. You sure will. Raise your price a thousand at least. So let's talk about the price on my head. Of course, we're very proud of you. You're a very valuable man to us. You see, we're going to make you our front man. We're going to send you in first on all our jobs. That sounds a little risky. <laughs> well, you don't have anything to worry about. You see, that face of yours is so well known that you're in about as deep as you can get already. Now, there's no point in us getting the same bad reputation, is there? <laughs> What if I don't go along with it? You go back to Comanche Creek, tied across your saddle, good and dead, and we split the reward. That's what happens if you don't go along with it. But you're smarter than that, aren't you? So that's why you didn't give me a gun. That's right. That's why we didn't give you a gun. was Ben Brady. He talked to Troop like a man giving instructions. It was hardly possible that a character like Brady would be the brains of this gang. So Gifford reasoned that Brady was a messenger from the outside, probably from someone working undercover in Comanche Creek. Hello, Ben. Put that gun up, Brady. You two know each other, huh? Sure. We got acquainted back in town, didn't we? Put that gun away, Brady. He's with us now. You know, you don't make a man feel very welcome. I'll probably kill you someday. You'll forget your old quarrels. That's what you'll do. Or else you'll answer to me. Both of you. Anything 
else I can get for you, Jeannie? No. No, nothing. Is something wrong? Everything's wrong. Jeannie, don't cry. I don't want you to cry. I can't help it. I know. I want to get you out of here. I want to take care of you. You tell anybody about this, so help me. Why should I tell anybody? It's all right with me. I mean it. You say a word. Look, I've got other things to worry about. Like how long do I stay alive? Janie! Janie! leave that old man. I think he'd want her to leave. Only one finish for a girl to get mixed up with a gang like this. I know. Trouble is, if she went with me, what good would it do? That troop is smart. And he's mean, too. He'd just as soon kill you as look at you. Not much chance of getting away from him. Troop? Is he the boss? I thought Winton was. No, Winton owns the ranch. Troop gives the orders. Here, maybe. Who's the real boss? The man outside who sets up the jobs. I don't know. They don't even... Who said there was anybody? I've been with other outfits. I know how they operate. You've got to have someone on the outside. Someone with brains to make the plans. Now, will you just forget about it? Like you said, maybe you better worry about how long you got to live. Now Gifford's suspicion was a certainty. There was somebody else the real leader working behind the scenes. It was important to get the information into Nielsen's hands. All national agents were trained in the use of the heliograph for communication. Gifford carried a piece of polished metal for this purpose. He just had to contact Nielsen. Prearranged signals told Nielsen that Gifford wanted to talk to him and would meet him where Gifford now was at 8 o'clock that night. August 10th, 7.45 p.m. Troop had ridden off early that morning without telling anyone where he was going. The outlaws were restless, anxious for action. Gifford was restless, too. He had a rendezvous with Nielsen. And it would be a problem to leave the bunkhouse without arousing suspicion. Anything left to eat? I'll fix something. Oh, I saw a nice new poster of you in town today. Yeah? How much am I worth now? 500 more. Only 500? That's all. Total of 2,000 dead or alive. I wonder why they only raised it 500. I don't know, but the handbill said you were wanted for a stagecoach job. Yeah, well, that's my business. Well, that's good. You'll know just what to do tomorrow, because we're pulling one. Fine. I'll leave you gentlemen to work out the details. Yeah, well, you do that, but just don't get any ideas about running out. I wouldn't dream of it. I like it here. Aiden.
Hi, boy. Take it easy, there's a rifle watching. What's new? Well, I stayed here close by to watch you. I didn't get word to the chief yet about this hideout. That's all right. I'm safe enough for the time being, I think. Don't slice it too thin, Giff. Pull out before you get... Shh! Hi, Phil. I'll give you a hand. Hey, you two! What are you doing? Getting some wood. Remember a little talk this afternoon? Shut up. I'm not saying a word. Somebody on the outside who's the real boss, isn't it? Come on! Come on back here! You want to get shot? He's just itching to pull that trigger. Look, troops in charge here, but the real boss is in Comanche Creek, right? You talk too much. I'd like to know who it is. Gifford had given Nielsen an unmistakable directive. Find out who the secret leader was. August 15th. Three days earlier, the gang had pulled off the stagecoach robbery. Bryant sent for the stagecoach driver, hoping to get a lead. And, uh, what Mr. Suppose... Delk! Well, you got me all the way down here to talk. Uh, about the holdup. The holdup, Mr. Delk. Well, I've probably been held up more than any driver that you ever knew. I could talk Mr. about Mr. Delk, holdup. just about the Sweetwater Road holdup, please. Show us. Oh, yeah, sure, I'll show you. Now. We was coming uh, up on the map. Huh. You fellas are sure impatient. Well, now, I was coming around that turn there, heading for Sweetwater, when lo and behold, this feller, he was dressed real nice. He was a handsome-looking man. He jumped his horse, spang into the middle of the road. Then he says, polite, just as polite you please, he says, would you mind taking this to the post office for me? And I says, uh, well, sure, and dandy. Then, when I went to get that letter, he drawed a gun. And a whole swarm of outlaws come out of that brush. And Could I you identify any of them? Well, no, they all wore masks, except in that one feller, like I told you. And he took my strong box, he robbed all three of my passengers. And one of them was the cutest little... Well, she was about... And I tell you, if I... Was this one of the gang? That's him. That's the feller that wanted me to mail the letter. Sitting out there with his bare face hanging out. He might have known I'd identify him. But you can't identify any of the others. They all wore masks, just like I told you. Thank you for your help, Mr. Delk. I'll send for you if I need you again. Well, I'm glad to oblige. Uh, enjoyed the trip down. Uh, Ain't been in Wichita in yeah, months. Yeah, Mr. Delk, you know? thanks, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, well, now, the Drop in again. Yeah. yeah, goodbye. Bad news. I've authorized raise of reward on Tanner to $3,000. Acknowledge M. Sherman, Supervisor Adams, Express Company, Denver office. $3,000. That's getting too tempting for them. One step closer to the day of collection. I didn't want it to go up so fast. Can't you hold it down again? Not now. They'd have to explain why back on down the line. One clerk somewhere talking too much. Gifford's a dead man. Notify Denver we comply with that request. $3,000. Dead or alive. After the stagecoach holdup, the outlaws laid low for several days. Cooped up together in the bunkhouse, they became edgy and nervous. Their tempers uneasy. <laughs> that was pretty stupid, kid. Who asked you? You've been getting mighty uppity ever since that little gal took up with you, haven't you? Now, look. You think I don't have eyes? I've seen her sniveling all over you every time the old man's back is turned. You keep your filthy mouth shut. <laughs> don't you ever talk to me that way, boy. Had enough? I ain't through yet. I said he's had enough. Here, baby. Tear his head off.
Where are you going? I'm gonna get cleaned up. Keep an eye on him, Brady. Come on, Hayden, up. Thanks. I didn't do too good, did I? You've done at him a couple of times. You ever tangled with him before? No, I've been avoiding it. If he ever jumps me again, though, I swear I'll... You'll what? Nothing. You know, it's the funny thing about nerve. It takes a special kind to kill a man. I never have. I haven't killed anybody yet. After the first one, it doesn't matter. One's gunning for the price on your head. How'd you get mixed up in this outfit? It was almost by accident. My dad and I had a little nester shack right near a big cow outfit. Dad got hurt. It was up to me to rustle grub. So I let down the fence and butchered a yearling that wandered in onto our land. They caught me at it, sent me off to jail. My dad died right after. So, I got away and I've been running ever since. How'd you get hooked up with Troop? I met him in a little place near Durango. I made the mistake of telling him I was on the run. That's all he needed. I had to do whatever he told me or he'd turn me in. You could light out some night. Uh, I wouldn't go without Janie. Look, you stuck your neck out to help me, so I'll tell you. You better get out of here while you can. I'll take my chances. You haven't got any chances. Gus? Take these out and post them right away. The new posters were distributed rapidly. Marshal Schur was determined to capture Gifford. Just before midnight on August 18th, Amos Troop routed his men out of bed and told them to get ready to ride. At this late hour, Gifford figured that Nielsen would probably be asleep. Gifford had to do something to attract his attention. That's right, it's empty. Thanks a lot. You got your orders, go ahead. A wanted man named Reno Waller was being held in jail. Gifford knew there was a good reason for the break. 
the outlaws would soon be needing somebody to take his place. Marshal Shearer himself was on duty. That increased the risk. Face first, if you want to stay alive. Lift your head up. Get your boots on. What is this? Get out. Come on, hurry up. Get that marshal in here. Straight on. Get on that horse. Marshall had not been harmed. Nielsen saw no need to help him. The outlaws remained close to the ranch for the next three days. On the fourth morning, Emma's troop sent Brady away on an urgent mission. saw Brady leave. Gifford had given him clear-cut instructions. Find out who the undercover leader was. Nielsen had to take a calculated risk. Leave Gifford and follow Brady, hoping that he would lead him to the man they were looking for.
Bedford was now worth $4,000. Jack Springer had been killed for less. Jack telegram for Nielsen. Bryant's telegram read, get Gifford out immediately. The operatives in the field could not get there in time, so Nielsen was to ask Marshal Shearer for assistance. I need your help, Marshal. National Detective Agency, huh? They don't come any better. Sit down, Mr. Nielsen. Sure. Anything I can do for you, just ask. Well, you know the Circle W Ranch? Yeah. There's a gang of outlaws headquartered there. On that old place? That hardly seems likely. Oh, they're there, all right. Ben Brady's one of them. He's over at the Stevens house right now. I'll hold him, on your say-so. Good. How long will it take you to swear in a posse? By tonight, maybe. We'll make it as soon as you can. There's a rocky point just north of the ranch house. I'll meet you there. You figure they're planning to pull out? No, but I've got orders to go in after one man. He's one of our agents. You're telling me you got an agent planted in that outfit? That's right, and if I don't... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. I can come back later. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's all right. I'd better get back there. I'll see you tonight. I must be losing my charm. horseman was Ben Brady. He must have left Comanche Creek before the marshal could arrest him. In any case, all Nielsen could do was watch and wait for the posse. Well, we have a problem. Either Judd Tanner there or Reno Waller is a national detective agent. <laughs> I knew it. This will be a pleasure. Sit down, Jess. All right, so it's me. You're all under arrest. That's the last smart crack you'll ever make, mister. Sit down, I said. Well, now. We could kill them both, but there's no sense in being wasteful because we're going to be needing one of them. Look, look, it is him. I swear. Maybe. Maybe not. Thanks for the confidence. We don't want to kill the wrong man, now do we, boys? So let's find out which one is which. Yeah, but how? We're going to make a little test. Let's go. Look, I, I know it's you. Because it sure ain't me. Easy, Walmart. You're scared. I give yourself away. Look at your hand, it's shaking. You got a point there. Come on, let's go, Reno. Nielsen saw the outlaws leave. If he followed them, he'd miss the posse. He decided to wait.
You always bust in on a man like this? Only on detective agents. I thought you said I was one of them. I did. One of them and him. Get down, all of you. Mister, I don't know where you get your information. Right from the horse's mouth. I caught sight of you trailing me back at Comanche Creek, so I kind of listened in at the jail window. Which one of them's your partner? I never saw either one of them before. Which one? I'm sorry, Cam. That one. He's lying! Shut up! He's lying, I tell you! Kill him. Well, go ahead. If you can kill him, Waller's the agent, like he says. If you can, it's you. Go ahead and shoot him. Another way. Going back to the ranch. And watch those two. Nielsen had deliberately sacrificed his life to give his friend another few hours, a few days at most, to live. Gifford made a silent resolve. Somehow, he'd make Troop and his gang pay for Nielsen's life. What are you staring at me for? He's the one. Tell me which one. We'll find out tomorrow. Why not now? We raid the bank at Comanche Creek tomorrow. With a lawman riding right along with us. That's right. If he tips his hand while we gun him down, then and there. If he doesn't, he had to help pull the job. Right, boys? That makes sense. To me. All right. We'll stand guard on these two until it's time to leave. And one wrong move. Just one. Kill him. The night of August 23rd. At midnight, Carter took over guard duty. Waller was asleep. 
Gifford decided this was his best chance. I wonder what he was like. Who? Oh. I mean the man Hayden shot. Well, what's the difference? He's dead now. Why? Kids, maybe? Cut it out. I was just wondering. Now, don't try anything. I'll shoot if I have to. Yeah, I know. Makes you think I'd be the one to jump you instead of him. Well, right now, because he's asleep. That makes sense. You think I'm Yaten, don't you? Yeah, I think so. You're right. I am the one. What are you gonna do, tell the truth? I don't know. It's... I just don't know. You're sick of all this killing, aren't you? Now, don't try anything. I don't have to. You're gonna help me on your own. Why should I? Because if you do, I'll help you. You've never killed anyone. Give me a hand, the law will make it easy for you. I couldn't turn on him. You don't know that bunch of killers anything. How about Janie? Remember what you told me? You want to take her away from here? Look after her? If I get out of this alive, I'll help you do just that. Is that a promise? Yeah. That's a promise. What do you want me to do? Well, our only chance is to get a posse here before daylight. Well, let's go and get one. No. Find us both gone, they'd pull out of here. I'll have to stay. I'll give you a good start and hold them here as long as I can. All right, if that's the way you want it. Go to Comanche Creek. Try to find the marshal. He's our best bet. Don't you worry, I'll find him. And Carter. Right hard, huh? Gifford had to trust Carter. Maybe he'd change his mind and take off to save his own skin. But Gifford didn't think so. Gifford gave Carter an hour to get well on his way. Waller slept soundly. It was time to move. If he could get a gun, Gifford might be able to hold the outlaws until the posse arrived. Carter. Well, that's uh, what I came in to tell you. Carter's gone. Gone? Get in here. When did he leave? I don't know. I just woke up. He was gone. I should have killed him. I knew he'd run out someday. You could have got away yourself. 
I told you once before. I like it here. It's some kind of a trick. Yeah. Well, we'll find out tomorrow. Take over, Jess. Call me in a couple of hours. You. Get over there. Marshal Shearer? That's right. I gotta talk to you. It's important. Better be important. Wait for me this time of night. It is important. All right, son. Take your time. Tell me all about it. We don't have much time, Marshal. They've already killed one agent. They're gonna kill another one out of the Circle W. We've got to be there before morning. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's all this talk about agents and killing? Look, I'm one of them, one of the outlaws. At least I was. I, I snuck out of there a couple of hours ago to come here. Got a turn in conscience, sir? You coming to me for help? That's right. I don't want any more of that killing. Well, son, you came to the right place. Yes, sir. You came to the right place, all right. Now, which one is it? Tanner or Waller? You. You're the one. Waller or Tanner? I don't know. Crazy gunslinging kid. Said I killed his cousin five years ago. Said he was going to even up to score with me. Well, off a couple of wild shots at me, and I had to. That's a shame. What makes him turn bad like that, anyway? Anybody here know who he is? I've seen him around a couple of times. Never heard his name, though. It's too bad. Just a kid. Nice looking boy, too. Early the next morning, the outlaws were preparing to leave. Gifford knew something had gone wrong with Carter. Well, it's empty. That's right, so is his. Well, you don't expect a man to go on a bank raid with an empty gun. We might have to shoot our way out. When you keep a rattlesnake around, you always pull its fangs. Let's go. The plan Shearer and Troop had agreed on was simple and deadly. Shear would kill Gifford and Waller as they ran out of the bank after the robbery. The 
the gang would profit in two ways. They would gain several thousand dollars in loot from the bank, and they would get rid of both men quickly, legally, and profitably. Because Scheer, having killed them in the line of duty, would claim the rewards for both of them. Peters and the other detectives were converging on Comanche Creek. Soon they were all present and accounted for. Peters gave them their instructions. They had no idea that right at this moment, Gifford was in the bank, his life hanging by a thread. Nothing Gifford could do but wait to see what happened once they had the money. That's all there is. You two wait. Poke your heads out before I'm going out, blow them off.
Peters, it's me, Gifford. Giff? Advanced of bank robberies and national agent. Agent? I don't understand. We're both agents. National detective agents. If? Bill's good to see you. <laughs> well, it's a fine time to tell me. I might have shot him. Well, you gave it a good try. Thanks for the help. Bring those men over here. Keep your hands up and move. Is that the bank money in those saddlebags? It's all here. I'll take care of it. I move. Just a minute, Marshal. A couple of questions I'd like to ask you. The young fella, Carter, did you see him last night? The young fella? I didn't see any young fella. He did, too. He killed him right there in his office. Oh. Yeah, there. Was a kid, you know, he was crazy or something. He pulled a gun on me. That's a lie. He came to you for help. I sent him. I'll take that rifle. Oh! Drop those guns. Drop them. Anybody move and I'll kill this girl. If back of my belt. Gifford's closest friend was dead. He could not bring him back, but he could continue to help bring law and order to the lawless West. The files of the National Detective Agency were closed on one more case.